So when I was in medical school over 30 years ago now, I shadowed a neurosurgeon at a big level one trauma center. I basically followed him everywhere. I went to the ICU with him, to the ER. I was in on his surgical cases and I was just trying to learn as much as I could from him. And one night I remember he sent me down to the ER to see a woman who had fallen in her kitchen. She'd slipped and she hit her head on the floor. He told me, go see her and come back and tell me what you think. And so she was in her 80s. I went down and saw her in the ER. She looked great with the exception of the fact that she had this moderate sized goose egg to her forehead from where she had hit the floor. She was sharp. She was witty. She was completely oriented and she badly wanted to go home. I looked at her CT. It looked fine to me. No bleeding. There was no skull fracture. And I was confident about what I was seeing. So when I went back, he asked me, what do you think? And so I told him, I said, she looks great, she's oriented, and I think she can go home. And he looked at the same CT that I did, and without blinking, he turned to me and he said, we're admitting her to the hospital. That moment has stuck with me for over 30 years, and I'll tell you why he made that call in just a bit. But first, let's talk about creatine and what we're learning about its role in muscle health, in bone health, balance, and the aging brain. A 2019 article in the Journal of Clinical Medicine dives into creatine supplementation in aging adults, especially its impact on muscle, bone, prevention of falls. I'll put a link down below if you want to check it out and read it yourself. But here's what it found. After the age of 50, we all begin losing muscle and strength every single year, slowly, quietly, steadily. This is called sarcopenia. And so when muscle goes, so does strength. That probably sounds pretty intuitive, doesn't it? But when strength goes, balance becomes compromised, reaction time slows, and your ability to catch yourself diminishes in lockstep with this process. And that's when falls begin showing up. And many people don't know this, but muscle and bone are directly connected. Muscle stresses bone. It stimulates bone and muscle strengthens bone through a process called remodeling. So losing muscle accelerates bone weakness. This is one big reason creatine is getting so much attention. Creatine is like a rechargeable battery in your cells that helps you perform quick, powerful movements, standing up, climbing stairs, catching yourself when you trip. That's really important. We naturally get some creatine from red meat and seafood, but creatine stores in the body drop as we age. Muscles fatigue faster. Recovery time slows down. So supplementing with creatine helps refill that system. But what about creatine in older adults? Is it beneficial as we age, even if we're not bodybuilders or physique competitors or physique enthusiasts? And the answer is yes. Three large methods meta-analyses found that creatine plus resistance training helps adults over 50 strengthen both the legs and the upper body, and it improves something we call sit-to-stand performance. That means it helps improve our ability to lift our body from a sitting position to standing without the aid of our hands, and it's one of the best simple tests that we can use as a predictor of fall risk. Inside the muscle cells, creatine pulls water inside the cell, and it signals to the body to build more muscle. It boosts protein synthesis, increasing lean muscle mass, reducing muscle breakdown. That means better strength, better stability, and better recovery. Bone research is mixed. Some studies show improvement with creatine supplementation and others don't. But the indirect benefit is pretty clear. Stronger muscles and stronger bones mean fewer falls and fewer fractures. Now let's talk about the brain from a neurological standpoint. We already know that research is suggesting that creatine impacts cognition. From pushing through fatigue, brain fog, and lack of sleep, to bolstering memory and cognitive function by creating an energy buffer for the brain. But another reason creatine may benefit the brain has nothing to do with its direct impact on the brain and more to do with the potential of creatine and muscle protecting the brain from injury. Because as we get older, the brain naturally shrinks a bit. This creates extra space inside the skull, and that space can allow the brain to move within the skull during a fall. And if it moves too much due to a force or traumatic impact, tiny veins can stretch and tear. These are called bridging veins. They're located between the surface of the brain and the dura mater, which is one of the brain's protective layers. And when these veins tear, bleeding can occur. And this can happen slowly or it can happen quickly, but fast or slow, either way can be really dangerous, leading to accumulation of blood in the closed space of the skull and leading to disability or even death. And this is why we take fall in older adults really seriously. Even simple
couple falls at ground level. Creatine doesn't prevent bleeding, but it does help reduce fall risk. And because none of us are immune, especially as we age, mitigating fall risk is an important issue. Studies show that creatine plus strength training improves balance, speed of movement, sit to stand performance, leg strength, and stability. And one analysis showed a 23% improvement with creatine compared to 16% improvement with a placebo. But that can be the difference between staying upright or going down. But the big question always asked, is creatine safe for older adults? And according to this study and many others, the answer is yes. Creatine is one of the safest, most studied supplements ever. It's been tested in frail adults, in people with diabetes, in postmenopausal women, in patients with Parkinson's disease, in patients with heart failure. And across all that research, no kidney damage, no liver issues, and no electrolyte abnormalities. It's looking very promising as an adjunct for aging men and women whose goal is longevity with strength and avoiding injury or disability as they age. That neurosurgeon I followed around, why did he admit that patient to the hospital? Because he saw something I didn't. He saw the loss of brain volume, the shrinkage of the brain that often comes with age, and space between the brain and the skull, which increases the risk for delayed bleeding following trauma. That's how creatine and muscle protect the brain indirectly, by affecting our muscles' ability to recover quicker, which in turn enhances our ability to build and maintain our muscle mass, especially the muscles of our lower extremities, which also in turn helps to keep our bones strong and protect us from fractures. Fortunately, the sweet patient was observed and she did well, and she actually ultimately got to go home. But that's not always the case for every patient. Falls matter, avoiding them matters, and doing what we can to stay strong strong and to maintain our balance and our coordination with each passing year is important. One of the most frequent questions I hear is, does creatine harm the kidneys? And if you happen to be asking the same question, then watch this video next. As always, these videos are for education. They're not medical advice. Work with your doctor on a plan that's just right for you. Thanks so much for watching and please share this video with someone you feel would benefit from watching it as well. All the best to you and I will see you in the next video.